four different spots of corn. I'm going to plant two seeds each, and then I'm going to select the best corn, the best plant in each of these. Spots. Forget about sustainability. You want to enrich ecosystems. Every bean is equipped to live a positive, energetic balance. Keep it pruned. We are cultivating abundance. Not a problem to cut down trees. The problem is not planting them. So the first thing I'm going to do is to pull this organic material out of the, way, the, the place where I'm going to prepare my nest. Remember, you don't want to pull the topsoil. You just want to pull the organic material out of the way. And the nest I'm going to prepare is going to be 20 to 30 centimeters wide, but you always want to open up a bit more room so that you have room to move the soil around. You don't want to be burying the organic matter on the side. So, you know, if you don't open up enough room, you're gonna end up, there's a sweet potato vine here. So you don't want to be putting soil on top of the organic matter, but rather the other way around. So, you know, you can see that I opened up a pretty larger clearing than I, than I intend my nest to be. So this is an old um, Mexican sunflower stump, stump. So I'm going to take it out. So what's important here, I want to utilize most of the topsoil that I can in my nest. So what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the topsoil of the nest. So I like to make round nests. So I'm going to pull, get all of this topsoil. I'm going to put it aside here you can see that I'm not throwing it on top of the organic material I'm just setting it aside then I've got my a bit more topsoil still you can see that the color already changes a bit because I'm starting to get to the subsurface soil which would be my B horizon as we call it All right, so I've got uh, my first 10 to 15 centimeters of soil set aside. Now, what you want to do now is to get, to go a bit deeper. Now, this deeper soil is not as rich as the topsoil because there's less organic material, right? The topsoil is what received all the organic matter. It's, it's where the worms bring their shit and insects also bring their defecations. <laughs> so I'm gonna set this part of the soil aside. All right. You can see that there is a slight difference in color, the two soils. It's not very big, but you can see that this one is darker because this one is the topsoil. This one has more brown dots, although this soil is already pretty homogeneous. But still, I know that this topsoil has more nutrients. So I'm gonna fill up this nest with my topsoil. What you want is to for your your nest to be actually nest shaped. That's why it's called the nest. Because that's gonna help retain more water and nutrients and concentrate them right in the center of where your plants are growing. So what I'm gonna do now is to 
do uh, and shape my soil in this nest-like manner. And I can use for that the that bottom soil that I took out. And I can use it to make a, a small edge. And once I did that, I'm going to go right ahead and put a bit of my special ingredient, which is that prickly pear gobble. Um, ooh. So I'm just going to bury it not too deep, but like uh, about 10 centimeters, five centimeters maximum. You know, it's going to serve as a, as a moisture retainer for my crops. So now I need to properly cover my nest. So I'm bringing back the organic matter that I took out, organize it properly, and then I'm going in with the seeds. It's important to maintain the nest-like shape in your in the organic matter. So you don't you don't want to cook, to cover it flat. You want it to be to maintain this nest-like shape. So what we've got here is I've got some red popcorn, some coriander. I love coriander and tomatoes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant four corn seeds around the nest on the edges and my tomato plants right in the middle because I want the corn to serve as a trellis for my tomato so that I can tie it and 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 put it to climb on the corn. So that's the goal of it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get I'm going to plant about four different spots of corn. I'm going to plant two seeds each and then I'm going to select the best corn, the best plant in each of these spots. There you go. And now right here in the middle, I'm going to put my tomato seeds. I like to put about um, three seeds of tomatoes should be enough. And lastly, the coriander, I'm going to just sprinkle it around a little bit, you know. The coriander can be planted pretty much everywhere. It's so fast. I can harvest it with uh, 30 days. So I'm just going to throw it around a bit. You always want to put these short cycle plants, coriander, arugula, or rockets, whatever you prefer to call it, in your in your in your systems because they come so fast and they go out so fast that they don't bother any of our cultures. So these are the nests we're going to prepare and plant. I've got about 40 of these nests to prepare. So I'm going to get right to it before the sun sets. All right, so I'm pretty much finished. The different shirt color was not magic. It's just that I'm recording this uh, a couple of days later because I had to do other things. And uh, so I stopped the work here for a bit. But this was uh, pretty quick, you know. It's the kind of work that if I had devoted a full day for it, I'd I'd be done in a day. So let's take a look what happened here. So after preparing the, the nests and planting, I took down a couple of banana trees because they weren't so so vigorous. So I decided to take them down. You know, that's going to open up more sunlight and it's going to allow for the banana plant to, to, to give stronger shoots so that I have a, a proper harvest, you know, from the pups that will sprout from this mother that I took down. And also I finished pruning uh, a tree that was on the border. It's really important to prune the trees on the edge of your system. So check it out. This is a Pterogeny Neatings. 
and you can see that it's a really really big stump this tree had been cut down you know, a long time ago and now i'm i am working on it so that it it occupies the emergent layer where it should be just like the other one that i pruned and so i took all the the the, the shoots that were coming down from the stump and left only one single trunk with a properly structured canopy and i organized all of the material here on the soil i don't want any soil showing you know everything has to be covered not only in my nest you can see that my nests are well covered i showed you how to do it but then the rest of the system will also be covered and and then i'm going to go ahead and plant some cowpea here in the in between in the open spaces where I didn't plant my tomato nests and I don't need to prepare a nest for the cowpea because the soil is already really well structured the cowpea has a very vigorous root system so it will you know with the tip of my machete I can just stick it on in the soil you know open up a, a bit of a small hole and throw the cowpea seeds into it and the cowpea really is the weed that i choose this is an important thing i like to say that harvest rather than cut cut rather than weed and weed rather than lose your crops if you plant a crop a vigorous crop to cover the soil you know that's green mulch we really need green mulch not only dead mulch you know, with, with branches and twigs and all that we need plants to cover the soil and the cowpea is the plant of my choice you know it's not very demanding it's going to grow here really well it's going to cover up the whole place and i'm not going to have to weed i'm going to have to harvest the cowpea so harvest rather than cut cut rather than weed and so yeah one thing that that's important when organizing the organic material on the soil you really want to make sure that you don't have branches or logs that will make you trip over so you know i cut the branches and logs first of all i organize them all in the same direction so you can see that they're all kind of facing this direction obviously that's not perfect because i want to be quick with my work i don't want to spend too much time doing this but i want to spend enough time in order to to not allow any of this organic material to be floating around and not in contact with the soil and you know i don't want to leave any hooks or or curved branches that might make me trip over and fall and get hurt obviously we don't want that and there's this other area uh here that i haven't planted yet and i'm actually going to make another experiment here i am not i'm going to do the same system with the same crops and the same spacing but the difference is that i'm not going to prepare nests i'm only because the soil is pretty well structured so you know if i open up here look at this the soil is just uh it's perfect so i really want to try and plant here without preparing the nest you know we really should mess with the soil the least that we can because we don't want any any time that we you know we, we start uh, digging the soil and tilling it we're going to destroy the biological structure created by microorganisms insects and animals so we want to avoid that but sometimes it's necessary but for my crops you know popcorn tomatoes and coriander and cowpea i think they're going to develop well here maybe they won't produce as well as in the place where i prepared the soil but it might be worth it due to the reduced labor that I need to put there. You know, it's going to be really quick, uh, but I'll keep you updated about that experiment. Let's see how it will do. That's the ideal, all right, people. We want to improve our soil structure so much that we don't need to till anymore. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will maintain you updated. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet make sure you click the notification bell so that we know when we, when we have released a new video and that's it i'm felipe for the agroforestry academy and i'm signing out